back with some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. I know I said at the end of the last campaign that I did that uh, I thought I had shown yeah, pretty much what there was to show with the uh, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and that I was probably going to... Well, I didn't say probably. I said I was going to take a break from uh, doing these. Well, I guess that turned out to be short-lived because uh, I enjoy doing the campaigns. I enjoy posting them. I enjoy doing the commentary. So I decided to do another one. It may be more after that. I don't know. In any case, just felt like doing it, so I'm doing it. And what am I going to do for this one? Well, when the campaigns were first released, which was back in late November... So, I guess six or seven weeks ago, initially, the YouTube content on that was all 1890, because that's the only thing that was unlocked at the time. And then, of course, as people completed those campaigns and moved on, there's not very much, if any, 1890 out there now. At least not among the more, you know, like... The, the Stealth, the Historical Gamer, Brother Monroe, etc. <clears throat> no, they're not doing 1890 anymore, and understandably so. <laughs> so there's not much new out there, if if anything. And so, of course, I've played the 1890s uh, myself, had to, in order to get to the later eras. But I haven't done it since this last major update and even before that that update there were other uh, changes and hot fixes and so forth there have been at least two revamps of of ai behavior and of course there have been economic changes as well so i thought that i would do another 1890 and Whenever the early eras, the 1890 and the 1900, get discussed in YouTube comments and Steam discussion forums, etc., you, you see these recurring comments about, well, the accuracy, the gun accuracy, is terrible. And even though they're short-ranged, the torpedoes and the torpedo boats are OP because they're, you know, they don't get killed going in and or not enough of them anyway. And they can go in and, you know, the 1890 ships are so vulnerable to torpedoes because of the, you know, there's no tech and, and not very good damage control, that sort of thing. And those comments are not wrong by any stretch. The accuracy is pretty bad. And, uh, you know, I'm not countering that at all so i thought that i would do an 1890 campaign that does the exact opposite and relies on gunnery and not using torpedo boats and, and that sort of thing and just see how eh, how does an all battleship fleet do in 1890 in the current state of the game i'm not going to say you know i've never done it before i did weeks and weeks ago um, but anyway, that's what I thought I would do, and maybe it'll be entertaining. Maybe with the crap gunnery, it'll be boring as hell. We'll find out. I'm going to do Germany, 1890. I'm going to leave it on normal difficulty. I, I, you know, I've... I've played a lot of these campaigns, uh, well over 20. I had, you know, I stopped counting a while back, but I've played a lot on both normal and hard. The only difference that I've been able to see has been pretty hard to see because I, I don't think there's any difference in the battles themselves. You know, the AI aren't any smarter or dumber one way or the other. Their ships are not designed better or worse, one way or the other. The 
only difference that I think is what is occurring, because you can't actually see the AI's economy in game. But because I couldn't see differences anywhere else, my assumption is that the difference between normal and hard difficulty, and it even says right here in the tooltip, is that the AI has an income bonus on hard. The same tooltip either way. With the recent update, the economy is kind of all out of whack as it is, specifically the AI economy, or it appears to be in any case. In my opinion, kind of the economic side of the game, the budget and so forth, seems actually to have regressed uh, all the other changes in 1.01 .01 and the hotfix right after 1.02 seem to be pretty good changes i think they're going in the right direction with this game but it i i think they missed the mark on whatever economic changes they made in the uh the ai's shipbuilding uh tendencies and there's a lot of people who are reporting and and I've seen some of it myself that you know the AI just kind of goes hog wild with number of ships and so forth so it could very well be that normal today uh, is harder than hard yesterday you know it meaning b before the patch I'm just gonna leave it on normal I'm gonna leave it on historical under the assumption that uh, the British historical behavior is probably, you know, however many different AI personalities there may be, going to assume that the British historical is among the more aggressive of the options. <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to design my own battleship here, I think. And with that, let's go ahead and start. Okay, um, basically just going for a victory point win, which is what they mostly are anyway. Uh, quite a bit in, in the past campaigns, I've brought out and talked a lot about uh, power projection and blockade and transport sinkings, that sort of thing, trying to figure that part of the game out, which takes some time and some inference and guessing because... A lot of that is just not visible to the player. Since the patch, both in the campaigns that I've posted, recorded and posted, and also with some off-game or off-camera uh, other kind of test campaigns that I've run, my impression is that 1.01 .01 kind of messed up <laughs> that portion of the campaign. Uh, unintentionally, of course, and I would expect they'll probably hotfix some things fairly soon, one would hope. But I'm just generally not going to worry about that part of the campaign. With the exception of trying to build my fleet and design the ship so that hopefully we at least avoid getting blockaded ourselves. Other than that, I'm not, not going to sweat that aspect too much. So, with that in mind, I'm going to design a battleship here that hopefully can handle itself under the various things that the battle generator is likely to throw at it. And I think we've all we've all seen by now you know there's basically several different types of battles you can't specialize a ship for a particular type 
because you know the battle gener the battle generator is just going to take what's available and throw it into different types of battles. So you kind of have to keep it multi-purpose and it and not really specialized for one thing, but terrible at another. It's got to be able to kind of do the job adequately under different uh, situations. So we're probably going to have some torpedo boot. Uh, torpedo boat ambushes that we have to deal with. Uh, there's going to be quite a few situations where we're going to be beating up on multiple heavy and light cruisers. And then there will be other battles that are 1v1 uh, battleship duels. And there may even be some, some pretty large battles where we face all of that in greater numbers than our own. So, I'm not going to put a whole ton into speed. As an entering argument, probably 18 knots. If I have to give up a little speed, that would be okay. I don't want to go as low as 16 even, but I might dial it down to 17 and a half or 17. I don't want to be blockaded. I'm going to try to build in three quarters range to help our power projection number. I'm going to try to get maximum bulkheads. If I need to drop it to many, I will. I'm going to go ahead and go cramped crew. I don't think these battleships are going to lose so much crew that I'm going to have a huge degradation to the crew efficiency. And I do expect to be building a number of these, again, just to avoid blockade. You know, for battle purposes, really don't need more than five or six because you know, you're not going to get a battle that uses. 10 battleships. So having more than, you know, having a huge number of battleships, 10, 12, 14, doesn't mean anything for the battles. It's really just about the the blockade bit. And I don't want Britain to blockade me. So I'm going to build, well, as many as I, as the budget lets me. And so I don't want to put too big a demand on the crew pool. On most components, you know, it's 1890. Very little, if any, tech has been researched. So there's not going to be a lot of choices here. You know, coal is all we have. Natural boilers is all we have. Base 16, that's it. Uh, I am going to give her an unbalanced rudder. I almost always go for that on every ship class now maneuverability yes it has some defects to it but that turning rate and when you need it you need it bad <laughs> I'm gonna endeavor not to let people within torpedo uh, release range which is not very far away in 1890 but it will probably occur that I have to dodge torpedoes at some point so I want the unbalanced rudder Steam steering, that's all we got. And do want the compound armor. Uh, no double. No bulkhead. And, yeah, we'll take the Citadel. That One interesting thing about the Citadel that took me a long time to finally catch on to. One of these stats here, they're right in the middle. Plus 2.5% armor strength. Now, so the Citadel... As I think everyone knows, is basically that kind of armored box within the hull that's meant to protect magazines, propulsion, that sort of thing. And it's not the entire length of the ship. It's basically the box formed by the main deck and the main belt with the fore and aft belt and deck and the superstructure and the turrets themselves and the barbettes being outside the citadel. However, 
Right, right now we've got with the compound armor, we've got armor quality plus 35%. Pop the citadel on. It's plus 38%. Armor quality plus 38 This would imply that you, that the citadel still improves armor quality outside of the citadel. You know, the fore and aft main deck and belt and the superstructure and the turrets also benefit from citadel, at least for that one stat. That's how I would interpret that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, how about armor? So I think we have to assume that the British battleships will probably rock 12 inch guns. We will probably not be engaging much further than, oh, maybe 5,000 meters. But you can see, you know, even, even at 5,000 meters, the accuracy is so lousy. Um, at two and a half kilometers, they can penetrate almost 18 inches of armor. I don't think you, realistically we're going to get that high. At 10 inches you know, plus 40%, you know, 10 inches would be 14 inches of effective armor. If we go 11, I, mean, I think that's reasonable. We're not going to get anything like that in the fore and aft main belts. I think the trajectories are going to be pretty flat. If we look at that 12 inch again, in, 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 they're not going to penetrate. Well, let's, for example, let's just say we had a 1.5 inch main deck, and then we have this almost 40% buffer from the compound armor. So that's getting us to, just for round numbers without quibbling, I know it's not quite this much. Let's say we have two inches. Okay. If we have two inches of effective armor on the deck, they have to be almost 10,000 meters away for a plunging shot to hit that deck and penetrate at 0.2% accuracy. And in 1890, the odds of even being spotted that far away so that a shot can even be fired is not to be assumed. Maybe under the best possible weather conditions and you're getting spotted by a torpedo boat or light cruiser that's closer. Yeah, maybe. But A, not going to be taking fire from those kinds of ranges very often. And B, on those occasions, the accuracy is going to be simply awful. To the extent that, you know, one or two lucky hits here and there, maybe. But we're not going to get pummeled with a whole bunch of penetrating main deck hits. For that reason, I'm going to kind of skimp a little here. And we'll go, uh, I'm just going to go an inch. So we can save some weight here as well. I'll just go half an inch on the fore and aft deck. Meanwhile, I think the superstructure probably will take some fire. Now, if a 12-inch round hits the superstructure, well, okay, nice job, AI. But, you know, there's going to be secondary fire and fire from destroyers and light cruisers and crap like that so we'll put a little we'll put a little arm on the super we'll go with half an inch on the superstructure i think that's reasonable okay i'm gonna go for the bigger towers 
Accuracy is pretty bad in this era. May as well get what whatever accuracy we can get. It's not much. Funnels. Even toward at 18 knots, even with the biggest funnel, we get 68.5% engine efficiency. And, you know, there's only very limited options on placement. So managing the offset, there's only so much you can do in this era with these hulls. Don't need barbettes. Because, well, you can't, you can't use barbettes. Right. Centerline guns. I don't know that a 12 inch gun, it's obviously better, but I don't know if it's going to fit weight-wise. If I plop on two single mount 12 inches right now, boom, that pretty much uses up all the available weight remaining without secondaries or anything else. I think I'm going to go with the 11. And I think I'm going to go single, not dual. And the reason for that is in 1890, there is a pretty significant accuracy nerf for using double turrets. In 1900, there's still an accuracy nerf for double turrets, but it's much, much smaller. It's 20%, minus 20% 20 in 1890. It is minus 5% in 1900. And then in 1910, it disappears entirely. There's no difference between using a single and a double in 1910. And then in later eras, the same sort of thing happens with triple turrets, and I have not used them, but I would assume this with quadruple turrets as well. And you can, you can see here at, uh, at 5,000 meters, 1.6% base chance to hit with the single turret, 1.5% with the double. And that may not seem like much, but as I've said before, every little bit of accuracy that we can possibly squeeze out, I'm going to do that. To the extent I'd like to use the 12-inch guns, I just don't think we have the tonnage for it. Now the counter argument to that is, yeah, you give up some accuracy, but you have two shells going. The accuracy percentage is so low in this era that, you know, for, for two of those shells to hit, and they're both operating under the same accuracy, actually landing two shells from a single, set, from a single salvo or shot from the turret, is infinitesimally small. I really don't know if I'm going to land many more hits with a double turret than I am with a single. And then there's the weight consideration, right? The doubles are 200 tons more, and there's going to be two turrets, so that's 400 tons I'm investing for what I suspect not going to be that much more damage put out. So I'm going single. And very limited on turret placement. And this is one hull. On some hulls you can kind of tell where the main belt ends. Right? You'll see a little spot where this 
graphic ends and so that's so you know that's your limit you don't have that here it's this is showing as if it goes all the way to the the bow and stern i don't think it actually does so somewhere in here main belt ends aft belt begins but that demarcation where it's thinner I guess must be on the interior not visible here outside I hope this is within the main belt I'm gonna leave Barbette momentarily Okay, now that we've got our guns on, we have some more choices, but we don't have many choices, you know. Black powder is all you got. <laughs> Brown powder, all you got. Um, heavy shells, contrary to the tooltip, actually improve accuracy. So I'm going to go heavy. I talked about this in a, another episode in another campaign, but just a quick, uh, you see right there, it says minus 1.5% gun base accuracy and minus 2.5% long range accuracy. However, I put it on standard again, okay? And we're seeing, let's just look at 5,000 meters again, 1.6% at 5,000 meters for this gun. If I put it on heavy, okay, well, it's about the same. All right, how about a thousand meters? 32% for the 11 inch gun. <laughs> and okay, well, I guess it's about the same. Well, at least there's not a degradation. On larger guns in later eras, it shows an accuracy uh, improvement when you do this. So I just kind of walked into that. At the very least, it's not hurting accuracy, so I'm going with the heavy shells. All right, then. I'm going to put enhanced. No, I already know I don't have the weight for that. Standard's fine. Hydraulic is all that's available. That leaves secondaries, which we're going to have to give up some weight for somewhere. And I'm willing to go to many bulkheads. If I need more, I'm willing to drop a little bit of speed. So. <clears throat> I would expect that there's going to be some torpedo boat ambushes so I definitely want some secondaries and I want quite a few of them with decent aft oriented arcs on the German battleships in this era the four inch mount is it has got a surprisingly large footprint and you, you can't hardly fit it on anywhere unless you actually give up a a main turret to do it it won't fit anywhere in the superstructure or, or nothing so that's that's out the window so three inch we'll have to do there's a couple spots we can put there's not too many spots for those either uh, that's a pretty decent spot we'll put some three inches there and I think I can probably shoehorn some here without affecting the aft main firing arc too much. Okay. I can probably put one. Nope, can't put any there. Well, can I squeeze one right in here? I can. 
I'm going to do that if I need the weight later. That's fine. I'm getting a lot of aft weight offset here, but putting when I get these case these casemate guns tend to send it back the other way pretty quick. <clears throat> uh, before I forget, I am going to put torpedo launchers on here. And specifically, I am going to put one aft torpedo launcher. Okay, back to the secondaries. Uh, looks like I'm done with casemates. I can put four inch guns in these spots. And some up in the bow too. They're fairly heavy. Yeah, I think I'd rather have volume of fire over caliber. I mean, they're primarily intended for torpedo boats and possibly light cruisers. I think I'm just going to go three inch all around. I do want some forward firing too. to get rid of some of these. Four weight offset one percent. I can probably fiddle with armor a little bit. Uh, but first, let me look at this barbette. Right now, we have a seven percent flash fire chance. If I go barbette, I get six okay so I need that well that popped on some weight there um, how about 17 not okay and that buys us something Can I do 17 and a half no okay I'll just go 17 And that's about all I can do for flash fire. You know, there's no less volatile uh, propellant and shell charge. <clears throat> and I can drop it back down by going to standard shells. Give up some range, give up some uh, HE shell damage. Well, and regular shell damage and penetration. I think I'm just going to have to risk it. So let's see if we can get to a good weight offset by playing with the armor. Looks like we can. 
Just added a little bit of aft belt and we're at 0 0.1%. I don't think we can fine tune that fine tune that anymore with with armor. What if I just ease this gun aft just a well no, it's not gonna let me. <laughs> Are those no they're not symmetrical. That's gonna that's gonna bug me, so Go back where you were. It's zero point one for crying out loud. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to fool with it. We're giving up zero point one percent acceleration and zero point one rudder shift. Everything else is still zero. This is fine. Uh, the pitch is not great. Not much we can do about that with this whole configuration. You know, very limited on where you can put the the towers and turrets. And the roll is not terrible. Combined, we've got twenty six point four pitch and roll. And no matter how much I fiddled with it on on this hull, that it's that's probably within a point of what's possible. So we'll live with that. And I guess that's about it. Just get the rest of our tonnage with a little bit more main belt armor. Actually, uh, no. Let's get some more turret armor if we can. Oh, where can I shave like less than half a ton? <laughs> there we go. Okay. I think actually I might slide that down a couple. I think I'd rather have more armor on the turrets than on the main belt. Okay. I'm not doing anything with, well, I can't do anything with the torpedoes. 15 inch is all we got and standard propulsion is all we got. It's going to be a 0 0.9 kilometer range. I do not intend for that to be an offensive weapon. I don't intend to ever actually fire a torpedo. The reason I put a torpedo launcher on here is for two reasons. First, you get your own torpedo range ring around the ship. So that provides a, an immediate visual reference for is the AI ship close enough to shoot their own torpedo? Everyone's got the same tech, right? If I'm 0 0.9 in 1890, they're 0 0.92. So as long as they're outside my torpedo range, I know I'm outside theirs. That's one reason. The second reason is it's a deterrent. The presence of a torpedo capability on this ship means that I think the AI is going to be less likely to want to close within my torpedo range. Therefore, making it less likely for them to bore on in and close to within their torpedo range. That's why I put it on here, and I just picked aft because, just for weight reasons, 
you know, the holes, most holes in general, kind of if you just plop stuff down, tend toward a little bit forward heavy. And so I just put the, and torpedo launchers are, you know, have a fair amount of weight to them. That's why I picked the, the aft location. Okay, I think this is the design. The, <laughs> the Bismarck, uh, the Bismarck class battleship for 1890. Not sure they would have named it Bismarck at that time because he was a little bit out of favor. The Kaiser had booted him out. He wasn't a big fan of the Navy. <laughs> okay. Now, how many of these are we going to build? Uh, they cost about three million a piece. We've got. 31, almost 32 million available in our naval funds. I think we can build eight to start. And they are, I think they're 9,000 tons, right? Yeah, 9,000, so there is room Yeah, there's plenty of room for them all to go into Emden. I want them on the North Sea. Let's not forget to check the add crew box. Yep, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Shipbuilding addressed. Max the crew training, and at least initially in this part of the in the early stages, going to max the transport capacity. <clears throat> Later on in the campaign, what, if we are able to get well above a hundred percent, this can become something you can that I'm willing to play with a little bit, but not at the beginning. Um. Let's take a look at the research tree, see what's close to completion if we're at 100%. 10 months away from a little buff to flooding control. Twelve months away from better torpedo tubes, although it doesn't really tell you how they're better. I would assume they reload faster or maybe lighter weight, I guess. 12 months away from Mine Layer Destroyer, which I don't think is actually implemented in the game. Everything else is pretty far away. Rangefinder. Coincidence Rangefinder wouldn't be bad. Gonna leave it at zero. Oh, means to actually put it back at zero. I think I'd rather have more of the battleship I just designed than to pour a lot of money into having a slightly better battleship months and months and months from now. Years, really. However, unlike what I've done in the past, I think I am going to grow the shipyard size. And every so often, you know, we'll add another pair of battleships that are at the same tech and probably pretty much the same configuration but with a little bit more tonnage maybe they can have a couple extra secondaries or you know maybe possibly get up to max bulkheads instead of many or you know after a couple of iterations possibly even 
squeeze on uh, 12 inch instead of 11 inch single turrets. Now, there is no, you know, this is just straight linear, right? Basically, it costs X amount for Y number of months. You know, it doesn't get cheaper per month wherever you put this slider. You get, you know, six months at the bottom, it's six months for five million or 24 months for 20 million. It's it's exactly the same per month. So there's no inherent advantage to to uh, going big. You just have to the only the only downside to doing it this way is you have you know, when that 6 months ends, you got to remember to to look and not skip a month or two. That's that's really the only disadvantage to doing it this way. But the advantage is if I, do, if I do it like this, I gotta wait two years before I can use this. Whereas if I go in six months, I could build a 9,500 ton battleship. Which wouldn't really add that much because a lot of that, a lot of the attributes scale. You know, I might have 500 more tons, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be able to add 500 more tons above and beyond what I just did. Of stuff because the speed will scale up a little more and the belts will you know the armor will scale up a little more so 500 tons doesn't really buy you much in terms of adding capability but I think a thousand tons will so I'm just gonna go where is it yeah I'm gonna go a thousand tons and then at the beginning of 1891 I'll build a 10,000 ton battleship. Maybe I can get 12 inches on it. Okay. <clears throat> and I think that will do. Let's start the campaign. Right, we have eight battleships. Uh, Britain starts with six, plus all this other stuff. So, we're going to need more than eight. I'm going to go ahead and build four more of these. No, just two. And then later, you know, we'll have budget and port capacity and crew pool room to add those incrementally better, uh, larger displacement battleships. But 10 of this class will do just fine. Um, that may have been a bad idea. We had room for all of these at Emden, but I think that was pretty close to Emden's capacity. Uh, 72 plus 9, 90,000. Yeah, okay, there's still room. After this, though, we need to shift to another port for where they're built. Yeah, except they're going to move around all over the place anyway. It's not like that's going to stay static. Just like any other German campaign, we'll be constantly moving ships from Danzig and Palau back over to the North Sea. Because this is where they, not always, it's not 100%, but the game tends to send ships after battle back to these Baltic ports. Okay, ship design, budget taken care of. I think that will do for this initial episode. And... We'll see what happens in February and the rest of 1890 or further into 1890 in the next episode. Thank you for watching.